tell, tell me why, why you decided to take up the violin. Um, it's been a love since I was since I was a girl. I've always been intrigued by it, and, and I'm plagued by videos and pictures on Instagram now. I think ever since I've been googling it or whatever, I've always been shown people playing it, and they're the most amazing violins, and you can play it in so, so many settings as well. Yep. It just looks so appealing and soothing, have, knowing the benefits of music on like self-soothing and emotional yeah. regulation. I know I can sit there for, for hours playing just as I do with my core rack and integrate this into my own um, musical practice as well. So Beautiful. hopefully you'll be able to give me those basics to get me started and then we can work from there. Fantastic. So this, this violin I've got here. Um, so you, you've already got the stickers on here. So what normally would happen at this stage is I would put some stickers on here to show you where to put your fingers, but you've already got them, which is great. And you can buy these online, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got those from Amazon. So maybe I can link below to where you can get one of these and then it helps you guide where to put the fingers. Yeah. Which is fantastic. So we're going to have to start off tuning this violin. So you've got a tuner on your phone, haven't you? I do. Yes. So let's so, pick that up. So okay. if you if you haven't already got a tuner, then I would advise you to download a tuner. So I'll link below to a decent tuner for an Android and an iPhone. Um, and you want a chromatic tuner. Mm -hmm. um, so let's open that tuner up and I'll okay. show you how to tune it to start Wait, with. Come on. Wow, Lou's interested in this as well. Lou is in. <laughs> Lou's going to be playing the violin in about five minutes. <laughs> well, a few less strings than the core. The core has 21, so... There you go. Strings, this yeah, this, is, this is going to be easy for you. Okay, so let's go on. Have you ever played the harp, Jude? I used to have one. Same. Is it the same as the chorus? Uh, I, I, I did, I did, with the harp, I turned it the other way around so it would match the, my strings and I mm. seemed to be okay with it. But obviously, chorus parallel strings and the harp is just one set. One way. So, yeah, so my thumbs and fingers didn't move each other. space to... Yeah, I sounded good on it, so... I'm sure you did. <laughs> The hand technique, right? Okay. So let's look at this. So we've got four strings, G, D, A, and E. Mm -hmm. um, the way to remember that is good days are easy or green dag dragons always eat. Okay. So good days are easy is the one that seems to work for me. I like that one. <laughs> so on your tuner, you've got a uh, different, obviously, if we play the first string, which should be G. It's coming up there as G flat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so G flat, as you probably know, is slightly below G because if a note has a flat after it, it means it's half a tone below. Mm -hmm. So a bit like one of the black notes on the piano. Mm -hmm. Are you following with that? Yeah. Good. So flats and sharps are the black notes on the piano and they're like the in-between notes between the main notes A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So we're looking for G and we have G flat here, which means it's half a step below G. So also there are more than, there's more than one G, which you will already know that. So you can have G, G, G. Okay, so that's like, again, on the piano, you have more than one C, more than one D. So we're specifically looking for G3. So okay. if you are looking on your tuner and it gives you a number afterwards, it's G3. So here we're just half a step below. So we've got two sets of tuning pegs here. We've got the main tuners and we have the fine tuners. So the, the main tuners are the ones that you will use when you need to tune it a large amount. So that's a bit like your core tuning pegs. These ones only do mm, between about a semitone, mm -hmm. not even that. So a semitone is the difference between the black note on the piano and the adjacent white note. So mm -hmm. it's like half a step in music. So to give that a pitch, it's like, ah, and these ones will only do that amount. So they're called fine tuners because when you get to the point where you're really close, these ones aren't very accurate. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to start using this one. So the way that you tune the, with these pegs, they're not uh, mechanical as such, other than they're just, they only fit in this hole here because of their shape, which is conical. Mm -hmm. So they're not glued in or there's no screw effect or anything like that. So when you tune, you need to press the tuning pick in quite hard and turn it either away from you. So that way, away from you when you want to tune up and towards you when you want to tune down. But you need to steady the tuning, sorry, you need to steady the violin with the other hand 
whilst you're pushing, otherwise your violin's going to go Okay. because you use quite a lot of force. So let's just try this one first. So I'm going to give you, show you first time okay. how to do it and then you'll tune the next string. Okay. So we're on G flat. So we need to go half a step higher. Okay. To get to G. So I'm going to hold it in my lap like this. I'm going to put my right hand on the other side. The tuning pegs correspond G, D, A, E. Um, so they go round like that from low to high. Mm -hmm. So this one I'm going to push in and turn away from me to tune it up half a step. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to tune more than maybe half a centimetre at a time because if you turn these too quickly you can end up breaking one of the strings because they it's like say if you pull the piece of elastic really suddenly it's going to snap because mm -hmm. the strings are slightly elastic or stretchy. So I'm going to push it in and turn it away from me about half a centimetre, a quarter to a half a centimetre, and then I'm going to check it again. So I went way too far because we're on A now. So we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In, that's how the notes cycle, as again, you will already know this. So I'm just doing this for the benefit mm -hmm. of someone who doesn't. So I've gone too far. So now I need to turn it towards me less than how, how much I turned it away from me. So maybe that was about half a centimetre. I'm going to go for about a quarter of a centimetre. A. Okay, so we're pretty close to G now, so I just want to show the camera. Um, within half a s step, so within a semitone. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do now is we'll employ the fine tuner. So I want you to try this, because this is easy peasy. So I'll hold the tuner for you. Mm -hmm. So with the fine tuners, they correspond to the string they line up with. So your G is your far. Mm -hmm. uh, on your left, or sorry, yeah, your left, and turn it anti-clockwise to D to tune it down in pitch, and clockwise to tune it up. So we want to tune it slightly down, um, but because they're fine tuners, you can turn it quite a lot of times. So I would turn it maybe three hundred and sixty degrees, and then try it again, because they won't snap the strings. Okay, now we're slightly below G, so turn it the other way about half away. So now we can see it's roughly in tune. Yeah, okay. Close enough. Yeah. They're gonna they will go slightly out anyway as we tune the other strings, so we'd have to check them again. Mm -hmm. Um so let's do the next string now. So okay. the D string, I want you to do this one. So when on you're your plucking own. it, do you is it can you pluck it anywhere along? string or is it best over the bridge? The best place is about one centimetre over the fingerboard. So this part of the violin here is the fingerboard, okay. this black stretch up the neck. So about here, one centimetre over the fingerboard is the optimal place to pluck here. the string. Okay. Yeah. So we're below. We're below, we're on D flat there. So we'll use this tuner okay. and I want you to push it in and away from you about a quarter of a centimetre and push it in again once you've moved it. And it just needs some strength. <laughs> yeah. Push it in again once you've moved it. And even if you see a slight movement, try it after you've pushed it. I'm not sure if I need Let, it. Let's try it first. I don't want you to go too far. Mm -hmm. So pluck the string. So we're on E now. So we're now a full tone above D. Okay. So we're looking for D4 on your tuner, D4. So, so we're coming down. Yeah, we're coming down now towards you, less than how far you went up. Now we're back to D flat, so it's something between the two because it's wow. very sensitive. A bit more. Wow. We're nearly on D, so let's employ the fine tuners now okay. and give that an extra push to make sure. So I'm going clockwise. Clockwise. About a quarter of a turn. Can you check it? Same again. So that's now sitting on the D, so we'll leave that and try the A. Yeah. So the next string is A and that will be A4 on your tuner. So we're slightly below A, so you can try the fine tuners for this, I don't think we need the main one. So I'm going Less. clockwise. Yeah, clockwise, 180 degrees. Another, same again, what have you did then? A 
sorry, that's spot on. Wonderful, and now we'll use the top string, which is E5. It's already in tune. Okay, good. So we're fine. Let's just check those strings one more time. So you want to go back and check your strings, especially if the violin is new, because they tend to stretch and the strings take a while to settle. So you might even need to tune them three or four times. Let's have a look. So we've got the F, what is it? G. G. That's slightly flat. So if you use the fine tuner and, and turn it clockwise, just slightly. Okay, we went too far, so a little bit more. A little bit lower. Good. D. That's in tune. That's in tune. Could you turn the E up very slightly, like a quarter of a turn? Good, I think we're in tune now, so we'll keep that tuner on hand, uh, two hand, uh, not on your hand, <laughs> you have to get a good tuner, and then we'll get on to the next step, which is affixing your shoulder rest. So um, I'm going to lend you my shoulder rest today because it's really important to have one because you need to be able to hold the violin between your shoulder and your chin without it falling on the floor to be able to play properly. So. If we do it without the shoulder rest, my neck is leaning forward and over time I'm going to get a lot of pain here mm -hmm. and also probably the chin's going to get a bit of pain. So we put something under here. Now if you haven't got a shoulder rest you can use a sponge and a piece of elastic. That, okay. that is a good happy medium. Um, but we use a lovely shoulder rest today. So this one is a Kuhn solo shoulder rest. I would recommend for you to get a Bond Musica which again, I'll link below. Mm -hmm. I want to buy one of those. If you have a large distance between your shoulder and your chin, because you have a long, long neck, you need a larger one. These are about medium size. Um, so I'm going to, as you're a tall person, I'm going to try and elongate it slightly. Um, and if, if you have a short distance between your neck and your shoulder, you should get one that's shorter. So there are lots of different options. I can link to those below. So ideally, we want it to sit as the curve, the curve here on the sh shoulder rest matches the curve of the shoulder and the collarbone like that. And then we sit it on the shoulder, right on the shoulder, so not in the middle like this, but so that the curvature of the shoulder rest sits on the actual shoulder like that. And when you have it on your shoulder, you want your shoulders to be back like this so that your collarbone is like a table. So you don't want them to be vertical like that. So if you have poor posture and you always put your shoulders forward, now, now is the time to put them back and flatten it so that the violin sort of sits quite nicely there as though it's on a coffee table, okay? <laughs> so to affix the shoulder rest, sorry, most of them have feet like this on, um, on the bottom and you can adjust the width of most shoulder rests this way so all violins come in slightly different sizes. Um, they're all more or less the same, but if you have a full size violin and you're an adult, then you need a full size shoulder rest. But there are also three quarters and halves and quarter size violins too. So this one is a full size and we affix one foot on one side and the wide side of the shoulder rest goes in line with the chin rest, which is this nice bit here that you're going to put your chin on. So the wide side, you just fit it just below the widest part of the instrument and then you scooch the other foot on the other side opposite that, just below the widest part of the instrument. And if you find at this point that the feet are too wide or too narrow, you need to adjust the width, okay? All shoulder rests are slightly different on that, but this one's fitting quite well. And then you scooch up the feet so it sits again, not quite beyond the widest part of their instrument, but just below, okay? And every person is a slightly different size and shape, so the exact location of that will depend on whether mm -hmm. it fits you. Um, and we'll talk about how that works now. So when it's on your shoulder, which we're going to do now, so we just want to lift your chin up, Jude. I'm going to place it on your shoulder so it's in line with your collarbone and shoulder. I want you to place your chin on the chin rest and look over the end of the instrument. Now, you should now feel there's some security between your chin and shoulder in holding the violin in place. So we're going to try 
letting go of the violin and see if the mm -hmm. violin stays there. And make sure that you're not hunching your shoulders up in the air mm. and that your shoulder blades are nice and down your back, down the back of your back. Mm -hmm. the back, of your back. <laughs> Good description. Exactly. And if you just let go of that, we're going to see now if the violin sits parallel to the floor. If it does, then it's in the right position. If it's slightly pointing downwards or slightly pointing upwards, we need to adjust the shoulder rest. So that looks pretty good. It's more or less parallel to the floor. OK, so if you find that the violin's going like that, <laughs> then it means that your shoulder rest is slightly too big for you. Okay. And if it's slouching down to the floor, it's slightly too small for you. So we'll be happy with that. OK, okay. Um, I do personally think that the other shoulder rest I'm going to recommend, the Bond music will be better for you. And but this one will do for now. OK, so. We're not going to use the bow yet. I want to teach you the left hand first, um, but we'll come to the bow later, if okay. that's all right. So pop the violin on your shoulder again, and we're going to play the open strings. So we start off doing what's called pizzicato, which is the Italian word for plucking. Um, so you'll be familiar with plucking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. to do that, we put our thumb, right thumb, you can wrap the left hand around here, just so it's not in the way and we pop the right thumb on the corner of the, the fingerboard which is this nice long bit here mm -hmm. and we pluck about one centimeter over the fingerboard so we've got e a d g so that's nice and easy would you like to just demonstrate mm -hmm. so one centimeter up so pop your thumb on the corner of the fingerboard that's okay. it and pluck one centimeter over for the most resonant sound Perfect. Is it better to have nails short? Yes, it would be ideal if your nails are short. I didn't warn you about that. So let's... <laughs> are your nails okay? Yeah, they might require. A let's bit have a little trick. look. So if we just, if you just want to hold your nails up there. Mm -hmm. So these nails are officially too long. So you want to have your nails so that you can press on the string as close to the nail as possible. Okay. Um, for the most accurate tuning level, without the nail getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So we'll cope today, don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the ideal positions... I might need to compromise with my Cora though. Ah, uh, you need to call it. <laughs> right, okay, this is interesting. So that's something that... See these little small things, it's a bit like playing we classical guitar. A, a compromise. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that we, we'll, we'll figure it out. Don't, don't worry about that. Worst case scenario, then, you know... I keep my left hand for the Cora, right for the... <laughs> Might, might have to, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as, as we go along. Um, so your ideal position for your fingers on the left hand, so we'll start that now. As you already have your stickers in place, um, I don't need to do that for you today, so okay. we already know where to put them. So we'll try one of the left hand notes now. Okay. So if you just want to place your thumb underneath the neck at the very end in the, the sort of curvy, curly part, that's it, and then make a letter L shape with the hand. Now, there are different schools of thought on what to do with the left hand. My school of thought is this one. So there might be people out there who disagree with this, but I'm going to link to a video about the left hand position below if you if you want more detail. But we make a letter L shape like that with the thumb, the paddy part of the thumb there underneath the neck. And then we curl our fingers over so that you can touch the string at the very tip of the finger as close to the nail as you can possibly get it. Um, with the finger standing as upright, or at least the first joint of the finger as upright as you can possibly get it. So we don't want to be sitting hitting the strings with flat fingers like that because that leads to tuning inaccuracy. Okay. Um, because obviously the tuning on the violin is very sensitive. So if you move your finger just a couple of millimeters, you get a different note. Mm -hmm. So we have to be as accurate as possible. So let's look at what we've got here, we'll try your third finger because I think that one will be all right. Okay. So your third finger aligns with the third line. You've got one, two, three, four um, stickers here. Okay. Are they and usually for each finger? Uh, yes, and they align with each finger. So here we've got one. Okay. So if you just hold your fingers up towards the camera, index finger is one. Thumb doesn't have a number. Two is a, the middle finger, three is the ring finger, and four is the pinky finger. Um, so I'm going to link to one of these stickers that only has four 
pricks on them because some of them have many more mm -hmm. and it can get a bit confusing. So your third finger is going to align with the third, the blue sticker there. Mm -hmm. And I want you to curl it over so that you're hitting the string with the very tip of your finger. Very good. So let's try that now. So you can use your pizzicato hand here and play that note. Perfect. So that's the top A if you're interested. It doesn't really matter what the notes are at the moment. So, so, so each finger corresponds to one of the lines on the, on the fret? Absolutely. So your first finger corresponds to the yellow one. Okay. Your second finger, you can try these now if you like. So the finger will move up and down? Yeah, depending on the string. Okay. There are other places to put the fingers, but when we start, we fix them. Mm -hmm. So later on, as you move on to different um, levels of playing, you might have your hand up here. Okay. There's infinite notes and we can play anywhere on the fingerboard. Okay. But when we start, we use these particular so positions. So 16 notes that we start with? To start with. Um, I, so as not to confuse beginners, we, we stick with a limited number of notes, which suits the keys of A major and D major. Okay. Um, but again, that information mm -hmm. isn't, isn't too important because as you develop further, then we introduce more notes. Mm -hmm. So the book that we're going to use today, um, it's the Suzuki School Violin School. And this one here starts in keys that correspond with these positions. Yes. So you don't need to worry too much about it and you will be sort of handheld through that process when we introduce more notes, okay? So let's just have a look at this first. So this book is the way that I learned. There's all sorts of information at the beginning about how to hold the bow and all, you know, things that a teacher will tell you anyway. Um, and it's a really great book which comes from Japan and is considered like one of the best ways to sort of start learning classical violin. Um, so if you'd like to we can try one of the exercises from mm -hmm. this before we look at the bow. Would you like to do that? That'd be good. Okay so I'll bring you the music stand. So I'll link below to the, the Suzuki book if anybody wants to try it. Okay. So we're going to start with some basic music theory here. So music is basically divided into bars which contain a set number of beats. Um, are you clear about that? Mm -hmm. So you might have four beats in a bar or three beats in a bar or something like that. So to start with, we're going to work with four beats in a bar. One, two, three, four. And the notes are grouped into beats. So you'll see here, these four are together. Mm -hmm. These two are together. This one is a one beat rest and this one is a one beat rest. So a rest means one beat of silence. Mm -hmm. So our first beat falls here, second beat here, third and fourth. Now, a single beat note, if you were just to play four single beat notes, it would be like one, two, three, four, like that, okay? So here we have four notes that fit into one beat and these are called semiquavers. Mm -hmm. So if you think about one divided by four, it's a quarter. Mm -hmm. So each of those notes lasts for a quarter of a beat. So the way that would sound if we were to just play constant semiquavers would be one, two, three, four, and those are depicted here with what are essentially two, two lines um, with a black blob on the top, okay? And then next door to those we have what are called quavers, and these ones are half a beat each. So you get two of those in a beat, which is why there's only two barred together. Mm -hmm. So they sound like one, two, three, four. So they sit somewhere between a semiquaver and what we call a crotchet, which is a single beat note. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four. 
So the rhythm here, we've got four to a beat and two to a beat, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, and we've got two beats of rest. One, two, three, four. And the easiest way to remember that is the word pepperoni pizza. <laughs> okay. So whilst I count, see if you can play pepperoni pizza okay. on the E string. Okay. So that's this one here. Yeah. So we put our thumb on the corner of the fingerboard. Okay. And then we pluck one centimeter over the fingerboard. I'm going to give you four beats in. And then when I come back to the one again, I want you to start playing. So it will sound like this. I'm going to go one, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four. sign here is a repeat sign so that means go back to the beginning and play it again and then when we get to this one so you play this twice and then this one here there are no rests in this bar so we have two groups of pepperoni pizza adjacent to each other <laughs> so it's pepperoni pizza pepperoni pizza repeat sign and this repeat sign takes you back to here because we have an opposing repeat sign facing it mm -hmm. so if you see a repeat sign you either go back to the the nearest repeat sign which is facing it, or to the beginning, depending okay. what's going on. So here, there's not an opposing one, so we go back to the beginning mm -hmm. and play it again. But with this one here, we've got a, 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 an opposing repeat sign, so the two dots after the line there are telling you stop here, and that's where you're repeating back to. Okay. So for this one here, see if you can play this without me showing you the example. So this one has no rests, and you just play pepperoni pizza okay. constantly. So on the first beat and the second beat, pepperoni pizza, and the third beat and the fourth beat, fourth mm -hmm. beat, pepperoni pizza. So I'll give you a bar in. One, two, three, four. So the next exercise below it is identical but on the A string. So okay. would you like to try that? Yeah. So one, so see if you can play all the way from here to here including the repeat signs. So that's the next string up from the E one. Yes, because we have good days are easy, okay. low to high. Yeah. One, two, which line? <laughs> three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. <laughs> Not surprising though. So with that one, that was absolutely perfect. You didn't do the repeat sign there, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. You know, that's not important okay. today and I never do them because I can't be asked. So um, you did ask me about the different finger patterns on the violin. So I would actually like to maybe talk a bit more about yeah. that. Would you be happy with that? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So I'm just going to grab a pen quickly because they've in this edition of the book, there's a print error. Um, which seems to be universal because I haven't found a copy of this book that hasn't got the print error in, so they've not put the notes in, okay. which is great. <laughs> so I'll just draw those in for you now. Sorry. So this will explain a bit more. Basically, all the notes on this page are the ones you're going to use in this book. So some of them are on the lines that you have fixed on your violin, and some of them are new. Um, but within this book, they start off with the ones that are fixed on the violin and then introduce some additional ones later on. So we've got one, two, three, four. Fantastic. So we'll take a photograph of these pages before we go and put them on the, mm, so people great. can see them. Um, the positions that you have on your violin at the moment are these notes here. So we're going to work with the A string first. Okay. So if you'd just like to pluck the A string for me, just to show me. I'm going to 
we want to all the folks at home know that string is <laughs> that's the a string lovely so it's the second from the top okay mm -hmm. so the notes where your finger markings are the yellow one is b because that's one step above a in the alphabet so we've got b which is your first finger on the a string so if you want to put your thumb underneath the neck in that curly bit and make a letter l shape with your hand and curl your index finger to touch the string, the yellow string, sorry, the, <laughs> the yellow line, um, or the, the first strip of, uh, what, let's just call it a fret, mm -hmm. on the A string. So that's on the E string. So you just want to switch your finger oh, over yeah. to the A string and touch it as close to the tip as so you can. If my nail is shorter, I'd be able to If your nail is shorter, it would be perfect, but it's not, and we <laughs> will live with that, okay? So okay, let's, let's try that now. So that is ever so slightly sharp. So as close to your nail as possible lined up with the string. That will do. Okay, so that is your B. So the other thing that I want to tell you now is your wrist should be in alignment with the rest of your arm. So we don't want a protrude, protruding or bent wrist. So what I mean by that is like this. So this is a protruding wrist. This is an alignment, so that's when you can put a ruler down the back of your hand and arm and the wrist doesn't obstruct it. And this one is also wrong because it's bent here, but the other way. So we don't want to bend that way or that way. We keep our arm in alignment like that. So the back of your wrist, there you go, perfect. So that's your ideal position. Good, very nice. So your second finger on the red tape is called C sharp. Okay, so that's one of the black keys on the piano. So we don't just start off with the neutral A, B, C, D, E, F, G, because the easiest key to play on the violin is A major and D major. So we start with some sharps and in, the, in the, the notes that we use. So don't be too confused by that to start with. Just if you're willing to accept it C sharp, mm -hmm. we've got a deal. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. And I'll write that here. Good. C sharp. Lovely. And your third finger goes on the blue tape, which is called D. So that's, yep, and that's half a step above C sharp. So if you look at the tape, if you just want to, can you just hold that violin up to the camera? If you can see here, some of them are close together and some of them aren't. So these ones are a whole tone apart, which is the difference mm -hmm. between two white keys that have a black key in the middle on the piano. Mm -hmm. And these two here are what are called a semitone apart, which is half a step in music pitch terms. And that's like the difference between a black key and the adjacent white key. Okay. So C sharp to D um, is like the note that's halfway between C and D, C sharp to D. So we're going half a step. Mm -hmm. OK, so your fingers should be touching when you're playing C sharp to D. And that's so because that's what that scale is. Uh, yes, that's okay. just because that's what that scale is, okay. and that's those are the notes that we're going to okay. start with. So when you put your second finger and your third finger down together, you'll feel the skin of your fingers actually touching. So whenever the notes are half a step, you should feel the fingers touching, and that's when you know that you've got the position right. Okay. If there are a whole step between the fingers, like your third to fourth finger, for example, which we're going to do next, D to E, so that's like two different notes that are adjacent white notes on the piano but have a black note in between. You should feel a finger's width difference between them. So your third finger D to your fourth finger E, which is going to go on the orange tape, so your fourth finger is your pinky. So if you just switch that finger for the pinky finger, the, the small finger, so the small finger goes on the orange and the third <laughs> finger goes on the blue. It, it will feel a bit odd to start with. Those two are a whole tone apart. And so you ever play two together, two fingers together? You would put down two fingers at the same time. Um, and we that's because of, do you just want to try the fourth finger quickly? So if you just pluck the A string. Yep, yep, that's right. So it's slightly sharp. So if you want to move it away from you. This string here, should be in the same pitch as the string above. So either your string slightly sharp or your finger slightly sharp, but we won't worry too much about that now. So a scenario where we might put more than one finger down at the same time, Jude, okay. 
is if we were doing this. So I've And this is called finger economy, so rather than putting one finger down at a time, we put four fingers down because we're going descending down the notes. E, B, C sharp, B, A. So if we were suddenly going to go, then we put all those fingers down at once, rather than going... Because it doesn't matter, you've got fingers back foot behind. Uh, it's more just because of the time, so if you want to okay. play very quickly and you, you were trying to do that, then you've got more stuff to do. Yeah. Whereas if they all go down at once. So one of the first songs that, that's taught in this book is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the first skills that's taught in the book. So basically, if you think about the melody of Twinkle, Little Star. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's an example. We can try that now if you like. So I, th I think we'll just scooch past all of the... the I think I might go and trim that one as well. Because Are you sure? Yeah. You don't, it's not going to interrupt your no, Cora. No, no, I'm going to this page. This is where this concept is introduced. So you've got pepperoni pizza here mm -hmm. on E, pepperoni pizza here on D, which is indicated by the third finger, mm -hmm. pepperoni pizza here on C sharp, which is indicated by the second finger. So they put the numbers in to start with so you, you know where you're at. Mm -hmm and pepperoni pizza on the first finger. And what they've done here is they've put one, two, three, four fingers here on top of each other. One, two, three, four, to tell you that you should put them all down in advance. Mm -hmm. And then you hold your fourth down whilst you play this note, then lift it up. Hold your third down until you've played this note and then lift it up. Hold your second down until you've played this note and then lift it up. And your first you're gonna be using till the very end. And then we've got a repeat sign here. So we're going to go back to the beginning, put our four fingers down again and play the same thing. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's the same exercise on each of these strings? Um, just on the A stream, using so, the four fingers that we've been using. So like this. So you place them down to start with. Four, three, two, one, all on their positions. So see if you can do that. So your thumb goes under the neck. And then we curl our fingers over and try to align them up with the, the one, two, three, four tapes that you've got there. So let's just have a look at those fingers. So you want to scooch in your third finger close to your second so you can feel it touching the second and then the rest look about right. And the fourth finger is good. Yep, lovely. Well done, Jude. So now <laughs> we're going to try that. So I'll give you four in and you're going to play that rhythm with the two the pause afterwards. The two beat pause. Okay, so am I, what am I, lift, am I lifting up? So you're starting it, I'll play um, it if you want. So we go three, four. Rest, rest with your fourth finger. Rest, rest with your third finger. Rest with your second finger. And then after those rests, you put the one, two, three, four down again and repeat it. Does this make sense? Yeah. And we're using our pepperoni pizza. Sorry, I can't speak and play at the same time. This is the same part of my brain. <laughs> okay, so let's just see if, if, if you can have a go at this one. I'm sure you'll be fine. I'll give you four in. One, two, three, four. So scoot your third in closer to your second. That's it, they'd be touching. Three, four. Good. So that's a scenario. So we've just jumped ahead a bit further than what we would do, but because you asked the question, now I'm going to go back to the previous page, we're on page 20, and show you a different configuration of fingers that you might use. Um, so this one here, 
is your first finger and that's a B. Same as before. And that goes on the yellow tape. Mm -hmm. Now this one here is a C natural. So that sign there means natural. And that is no different to just a C without a natural sign afterwards, but we're using it because we previously used C sharp. So it's just to tell you that we're now using the natural version of C, which is the white key on the piano called mm -hmm. C. And that is one semitone higher than the B. So your second finger, rather than going on the red tape, which is one whole tone above that, mm -hmm. it's gonna sit halfway between the two. Okay. So let's try that. So if you find B first, so put your thumb underneath the neck, make your letter L shape, and then curl your finger over so it touches the first, the yellow tape on the A string, and play me a B. Good. Now I want you to place your second finger directly next door to it, so it's touching the skin of the, the, the first finger, mm -hmm. and that should get you perfect, a C. And then your third finger can still go on the blue tape, um, so we, we just skip out the red tape. A little bit um, further away from you, that's it. Perfect, and then your fourth finger goes on the fourth tape. Oh wow, can your left thumb slide down? To... Yes, you can adjust your left thumb. Every hand is different, so do what you need to do. And you can also lift the other fingers up if you want. Good. Okay. So that configuration we'll also be using in this book, which is a B, C natural, D and E. So that's just a different key that we'll be using later. And then there's one more configuration. So you don't need to remember these notes. You will learn them by osmosis through the process. Okay. But I just want you to just give you an example of how the, the notes um, on the tape are not the only notes that you're going to be using. So here we've got B to C sharp, to D sharp to E. So this line here, when you've got a zigzaggy line like that between the notes, that tells you it's a semitone okay. in this book, specifically in this book. Some other violin books use similar not notation. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put our first and second fingers on the tape and the third finger is going to sit halfway between the third and the fourth tape. So the upside down triangle tells me my finger is going to touch, touch. the ones as well. Exactly, okay. exactly. So when, when I'm not here, you'll know where to put them because that tells you that. Yeah. Right. So again, make your letter L shape. Curl your finger over to I touch. I want to hold it with my right hand. Do I not need to? No, you, you don't need to. You can, as long as you've got your chin on the chin rest oh. and your shoulder on the shoulder rest on the shoulder, you should be fine. Okay. Because the weight of the head sitting on the chin rest should hold it in place. Okay. If you've got a nice relaxed head. Yeah, I wasn't doing that before, that's better. <laughs> cool, okay, that's good. I'm not doing it because I haven't got a shoulder rest on, so I can't do it, but I'm, I'm old hat, so I can, I'll, okay. I can get away with this stuff. Okay. okay, so first finger goes on the first tape, on the A string, and that's your B, so if you want to play a nice B. A little bit lower, so it's slightly sharp, that. A little bit lower again, so try to get the, the tape in line with the nail. Good, okay. Second finger on the C sharp tape, which is the red tape, no problems there. Okay. And then your third finger should sit halfway between the blue and the orange tape, third and fourth. That's a D sharp. Good, and then your fourth finger goes on the orange tape next door. <laughs> So those are three different configurations, so it's a bit like if you think about the word configuration means sort of setups, right? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different configurations on the violin and these are three different basic ones that we're going to start with, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So I'm not going to jump ahead, although I want to, because <laughs> this, this part here is quite important. Okay. So what we have here is a different rhythm to the one that we started on and We've got two quavers, so that's when the beat is divided into two, mm -hmm. because the notes are barred together as just two notes, are, which means our beat is split into two. So that one here mm -hmm. just sounds like three, four, one. Okay, so this little squiggle here is called a quaver rest, okay. so that's half a beat of silence. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're not sure how these notes relate to each other, you can go to the back of this book. Um, there's an index at the back. It's coming back to me. Can you see here? That index on page 45 shows you how the notes relate to each other. So you've got, these are your standard one beat notes. These are half, these are quarter. These are two beat notes, these are four beat notes. Mm -hmm. So it's always divide by two, divide by two as we go down. Mm -hmm. I call this the rhythm tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yeah. Cool. So. Here we have two quavers. A quaver rest and another quaver. So these two here are grouped together. One beat. And then your next beat is these two here. So we've got half a beat rest followed by a note and then these are two beats of silence. So the way this works is we break, we, we do something called subdivision when we're counting. So one and, we add an and in on each beat, two and, three and, four and. And we do that to help us find the quaver beat. Okay. Okay? Because to find that rest, because it's half a beat, and then know when to play that, we need subdivision to help us find the half beats. Okay? okay. So I'm going to show you how this will sound. So that would that could be a note, but it's a, it's a silver. It's a silence, yeah. Okay. Um, so one and two and three and four and one and rest and three and four and one and two and three and four and so your rest falls on the second beat mm -hmm. but you play on the half beat after that mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah do you want to have a go at that yep one and Ooh, two on. so you're going to be very good at this because you will draw that so <laughs> one and so two. i'm on the oh just the open e oh right so we're just going to keep it simple. One uh, and that's last two. string. Yeah. On the highest string. Okay. One and two and three and. So come in on the one. So I'll give you, <laughs> one, I'm just giving you a bar in. You start on the one. Okay. okay. So we'll start one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Perfect. So most people find this one really difficult, mm -hmm. but because you have musical training, obviously it's easier. I'll but find another route in. Exactly. Um, so that's really simple. So that doesn't have a word that goes with it, unfortunately, like pepperoni pizza. So you just have to do the counting. Okay. Um, but it's a great introduction to subdivision. So the next rhythm that we have here is blackberry raspberry. So. <laughs> Berry raspberry is the word that I use. Um, so we have here our groups of beats all barred together with more than one different type of note involved. So here we have a quaver and two semi quavers. Mm -hmm. So these ones are worth two of these. Mm -hmm. And the more lines you have, the shorter the notes are. So basically, that adding a line just means divide the note by two. Mm -hmm. Time wise. Yep. So how you'd count this is one and so the and falls on the semi quote first semi quaver, two and and then this is just your three, four, easy. Put the and in second position. So I would say if you wanted to use the just the counting, you could go one at and two at and three. Mm -hmm. One at uh, and two at uh, and three and four and it sounds like one at uh, and two at uh, and three and four and blackberry raspberry mm -hmm. nice so easy here we go okay three and four and one at uh, and two at uh, and three and four and one at uh, and two at uh, and three and four perfect so that's nice and easy. Mm -hmm. So these are all different rhythms that are we're going to use again later when we're going to do a twinkle twinkle star mega mix. 
<laughs> so what do we have here? We have D. The rhythm here is called triplets. So do you know what triplets are already? A group of three beats. So notes. three notes over one beat. Okay. Or three, in this case, it can be any kind of note. So it could be three semiquavers or three. Um, so ordinarily where you'd have two, because mm -hmm. everything divides into two beats, notes, you know, a crotchet divides into two quavers, which divides into two semiquavers and so on. Mm -hmm. Instead, that becomes three. So they're all equally spaced. Yeah, they're all equally spaced. Okay. So in this case, we have three quavers and they go over one crotchet beat. So that's what we've been using so far. So it's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One uh, and two uh, and three. Sorry, <laughs> four. Okay, so it feels a bit like a swaying feel. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Follow? Mm -hmm. Okay, have a go. So I'll give you three, four, and you can come in on the one. So three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, but I'm doesn't matter. Four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Perfect. So you even did the repeat then, which is good because I always forget the repeat. Okay. Um, Cool. Okay. So in contrast to the one we just did before, mm -hmm. the brass bow or black bow, yep. there's a timing change there. So da, 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 yes. da, da, but these are just linked. These are evenly spaced okay. and that's the difference. And you know it's okay. a triplet because there's a number, they'll, they'll be grouped together as a three and there'll be a number three written under. Mm -hmm. okay. So that tells you space them out evenly. Whereas here we've got a short note followed, sorry, We've got a quaver followed by two semiquavers, so the two semiquavers are worth the same amount of time as the one quaver. Okay. So there's a different spacing. Okay. Okay. Follow? Yep. Fantastic. So the next rhythm we have here on E, so this is page 22 again, is uh, two groups of semiquavers. And where's my pencil gone? There it is. <laughs> so the rhythm here is four notes in the beat. So you divide the beat by four. So it's a bit like pepperoni. Pepperoni, pepperoni. Mm -hmm. Or semi-quaver, semi-quaver. Mm -hmm. There's lots of ways of remembering it. So do you just want to try that one? Yep, I can. I think you'll be fine. So I'll give you three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Repeat. Okay, so now we're going to try changing strings. So exercise A on page 22, we've got pepperoni pizza on E and then on A and then on A and then on E and E, A, A, E. So these are two different strings. We're not going to use any fingers yet, just open strings and I'll write the name underneath so that you remember. Don't worry about remembering the names of the notes for now because they will go in via osmosis so you don't need to go and sort of study them or anything like okay. that. Okay, so let's try this now. So I'll give you three, four and you come in. There's a repeat sign here. Um, so you play each one twice, mm -hmm. but don't worry about it. Um, if you forget it, just carry on. Mm -hmm. Three, four. A string oh, here. Okay. Yeah. So we'll take it again. Three, four. Three, change to the A string. And repeat. Five, three. Oh, sorry. Well, don't worry about the repeats. Three, rest. Rest, that's fine. And so here we haven't got any rest, so I, I should have told you that in advance. Um, that's just. E, it did register a, when I was a, looking at it. E. 
I should have given you a heads up. So we'll take it from here again. Okay. Second line, three, four. So don't forget to change over to the next string. Okay. Yep. So we go E, then A, okay. and then A, then E. Yep. Okay, three, four. try this rhythm here which is, is the rhythm where you there's no word but we subdivide so it's one and two and three four and you don't play on the second beat do you remember this one okay we don't play on the second beat i'll circle that for you so to remind you sorry i'm really bad at writing sideways and on the second line there's no rests or no quaver, no crotchet rests. So we're just um, moving straight from one set of notes to the other without a break in between. So I'm going to play this for you first so you can hear what it sounds like because it's got quite a familiar kind of rhythm to it, um, which you might just be able to play from here anyway. So it sounds like this, three and four and one and so this is B on page 22. So three and four and one and rest and rest, rest, one and rest and rest, rest, one and rest and rest, rest, one and rest and rest, rest. And then on the last line, there are no crotchet rests. So we go three, four, one and rest and two and make sense okay, kind of yep so what i've done i've actually made a mistake here i didn't put three and four and here it should be three and four and i've just put one and two and twice okay um but i think that that's, that's probably going to help you yeah. it does mean the same thing exactly so we'll stick with that now because it's not involving new numbers so if you want to play through all of those, you so don't does it indicate here which string I'm playing? Ah, let's do that for you. So I'll write above <laughs> A, so now it's E. E. So how, how do a. you know it's those strings? Is it just because we're on the line? That Where the note sits oh, on yeah. the line <laughs> tells you which note it is. Um, so again, don't worry too much about what notes are what because you will get them as okay. you play through the exercises in the book. Okay. So. You know, it'd be helpful if by the time you come next week, you know the difference between A and E, as in one of them's high and one of them's low. Yeah, okay. The higher they are upon the what we call the stave, which is this grid with the lines, the higher in pitch they are. Mm -hmm. So the ones that are lower down, like this one here, tells us that this is lower than that. So therefore, it's probably going to be A if we're just dealing with E's and A's. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm just meeting the barriers that I met before at a younger age, but I'm pushing through them. <laughs> You'll get me there, don't worry, don't worry, it will be fine. And you don't, there's no swatting up you need to do, no revision, just go through the exercises, it will go in your brain somehow. Okay, okay so do you want to do the repeat signs or not? Where's the, so one I get here, to the end one here, one of here. there, the first one, and then you yep. repeat the whole thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is page 22B, one and two and three and four and two and three and four and change strings one and two and three and four and repeat one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four no rest now one and two and three and four so here we've got a string change the rhythm you played was correct okay but we changed to okay. the a here so it's yep. like e e e a a okay three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two Perfect. Oh, 
so most people really struggle with that, but because you have musical experience and a good ear, well, you picked it up much more Being quickly. dyslexic as well, what I don't pick up from there, hearing you play it first would help Helps. mold it together. Of course, yeah, yeah. different That's styles. not necessarily a bad thing because it really helps to have a good ear. And the Suzuki method does actually re require teachers to teach by ear. Mm -hmm. So as we go through, I'm going to get you to memorise things mm. so that you actively engage your ear because it's one thing to be able to read from sheet music, but when we're performing, it's really important that we can let go. So we want to be able to memorise music so that we can mm. actually perform and be in the moment. It's an important internalisation of it, isn't it? Yeah. It's like the difference between reading from a script reading a speech from a piece of paper and having it internalized yeah. or you know if you're improvising then you're just reeling it off at random and yeah. that's a whole different space as well but yeah so but this because it's mathematical i've been put off by this before and i've just run which mm -hmm. is what i did at school with dyslexia right but now i'm placing myself in it so i've got strengths in other areas so this will go so in I'm... much more easily now because <laughs> because you, you already understand rhythm you, the rhythm that you have is absolutely perfect there, so it's going to be no problem for you to get your head around it. And it's just, it's a bit like being able to learn a language through just speaking and being able to write it down. Yeah. The writing it down is only useful when you want to be able to communicate something in writing to someone else. Mm -hmm. So Joe Bloggs, Mr. Twinkle, wrote Twinkle Little Star 500 years ago in Germany or whatever, you know, it's probably not true. Um, for him to communicate his Twinkle Little Star to us in this book, it's written down and therefore we can read it that way but yeah. we could also learn it by ear no problem um i learn 90 percent of stuff i do by ear now because i find it quicker yeah than reading but when i'm trying to teach people i need to be able to write it down so yeah. i can communicate certain ideas to them reference yeah makes sense yeah, yeah definitely so just uh in case the first footage we got didn't didn't work about beat feet i want to just talk about that a bit now sure so jude you've got a music business um you're, you're a music entrepreneur yeah and you why don't you tell everybody about what you do so you teach people how to drum essentially yeah so so um having a musical ear i picked up real languages really easily at school so i speak fluent french and german now cool. but coming back to the grammar I, I can still get lost in it so I, so I have to have a frame of reference so learning languages i went into beauty which was a language teacher but I ended up teaching languages through music in my classrooms mm -hmm. and I thought there's something here isn't there really so I left teaching I took the big leap and I started my company Beat Feet Driven Dance and Wellbeing Workshops um, used my hobby which was percussion and specifically West African drumming on a djembe drum and um, I decided to create a whole business based around um, the, jo the joy and the passion for teaching for the rhythm and um, global rhythm from all over the world um, and world well-being aspects of, of taking part in music making as well so that's what inspires me on in my business now fantastic so I'm, I'm going to put the links to, to those so below <laughs> so if you're interested and you live in the Nottingham area then you can see the website below for Beat Feet and uh, maybe you can bring Jude along to come and do a workshop in your school or workplace oh that's great we're based in Nottingham but we do travel all over the country so thank you even better there you go Thanks very much, Jude. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. Brilliant. Teacher. All right, let's take, let's put your violin away, so I'll show you how to do that as well. <laughs> so, here's your case. So you can place the violin in the violin mold. That's fairly obvious. Do we take the? Oh yes. So there? scooch the feet off of the bottom of this. So you just want so to just pick off. Scooch them downwards like that. Okay. And then it will fall off. Okay. And then the violin goes in that nice violin shaped hole there. Okay. Most cases will have <laughs> a nice that little velcro bit there, which is useful to strap in just in case you accidentally leave your case unzipped and then pick up the case violin. Disaster. Then it won't fall out. Has it's happened a couple of times. And then if you were going to use your bow, which we haven't We've not even still done, the bow. <laughs> it's coming soon. And I always got a black horsehair bow. Lovely. Um, you unscrew the bow before you put it away. So that the hair isn't taut because if it's constantly taut it will eventually fall out mm -hmm. so you want it to be relaxed when you put it away and you do that by unscrewing that nut okay there or bolt or whatever it is i'm not a mechanic <laughs> and then pop it in there clip that so it stays put and your violin's ready to go fantastic cool. and i will say thank you to nottingham music hub um, that lent me this 
I know. Yeah, a bit of, with a view to purchasing one of my own. So Fantastic, yeah. that's really good. Wonderful, so maybe we can link to them as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, there's a whole list of links. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, Ursula. Nice one, thank you. Yeah, that was great.